Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Music Theory Tuition series where I work with you step by step through the ABRSM Discovering Music Theory grades. I'll work through every single exercise and explain everything you need to know. You can access information about the books I have available to help you on my website. Go to SharonBill.com. For advert free and longer lessons, you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sharon Bill. If you can give me a like, that would be super. And please do subscribe to my channel to stay updated. You can support this channel by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Sharon Bill. Let's continue now moving on to exercise eight. And so we've already discussed actually the fact that the time signature appears at the start of a piece because of course we need to know what unit of beats we're counting in for each bar so that we can play the piece accurately. It could change later on in the piece. A composer could choose to change the time signature whenever he wants to. And so if you're playing a piece of music, you need to check and keep an eye out in case it does change. And so at the start of a next section of music, you might find a new time signature, but it will always begin at the it will always be at the beginning of the piece of music. And so don't forget that all of these time signatures that we're dealing with in this grade are counting in crotchet beats per bar because if you remember, referring back to my PDF um, on my website, you can see that the American or pop names, the rock names, it depends what instrument you play in. Um, so if you play an electric guitar or drums or something like that, they tend to use the American terms, whereas um, we use the classical names more in terms of piano and so on. They both mean the same thing and they're both actually quite helpful. And you can see that we've divided into quarters. There are four quarters to the whole and that tells us we're counting in quarter notes or crotchet beats. So we're always counting in units of a crotchet for this grade. And so now we've got the time signature, we've got the appropriate notes, but there are no bar lines. And so we need to just add a bar line after whatever adds up to two crotchet beats. So there's one crotchet beat, there's another. One plus one equals two, so we need a bar line. So it's just getting the maths laid out. So grab your pencil, grab your ruler, uh, have a, an eraser to hand just in case and have a go with this on your own and then we can check the answers through together. So I'm hoping that you've had a little go of this on your own. And so now let's continue and complete exercise A. We'll check these answers together. So we know a minimum is two beats and so that's that bar completed. A half a beat plus a half a beat gives us one beat. There's another beat. And that should leave our final bar with two beats. And so if your final bar doesn't add up, you know that you've gone wrong somewhere in between because you should be just spot on right by the end of the bar. So if something's gone wrong here, just double check backwards and you'll soon figure out what's gone astray. Now remember, this is our common time time signature which is another way of writing 4 over 4 so we know that we've got to add up to 4 crotchet beats per bar so we've got a 1, a 1 and that's a 2 beat, no that's a minimum so 2, 3, 4 there's our bar line and then we know that's 2 beats that's 2 beats there's our bar line 2 plus 2 is 4 Bit of a big bar line there, never mind. And then we have a one beat. Two halves gives us one. And there's two beats, two, three, four. So we know our final bar is complete. Then we know we're okay. Next one. So we have to add up to three crotchet beats. Whatever makes the same equivalent as three crotchet beats. So a half plus a half gives us one. There's another one. Half plus half gives us one. One, two, three, bar line. These are crotchet beats, so we just need three crotchet beats. One, 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 gives us three. Here's another crotchet beat, and then we have a minimum beat which is worth two. One plus two is three. 
So our final bar should be sorted. There's a two bit note, there's a one bit note, two plus one equals three. So we're okay there. Carrying on. So now we're counting in four beats per bar. Again, it's exactly the same as common time, just a different way of writing that same time signature. So we're adding up to four. So here's a one beat note, here's a two beat note. The spacing also is interesting because notice when there's a long note, they give you longer, so visually you can see that it's longer and music should usually be positioned like that so that visually you can see that's lasting longer. We don't just squish a one bit note right next to a two bit note. We need to show visually that that's lasting a longer time. So that's another little clue that will help. So uh, here we have a one beat, so one, two, three, four. There's our bar. So now we have our two beat and a one beat. And then these two half plus half gives us one, two, three, four. There's our bar line. And hopefully this should mean we're correct for the last bar. One plus one plus two equals four, yes. So now we have to count to three beats per bar. So we have a two beat. And then you can see there's our long note, a bit of a gap while that long note continues. We can see how the note's holding. And then half plus half gives us another beat. So two plus one is three, there's our first bar. And notice that's only half a beat. And so the next beat comes in quite close, doesn't it? Because that's only half a beat. The positioning shows that by bringing this a little bit closer. Okay, so back to the maths, here's one beat, and there's two beats, so one plus two is three, so don't pop your bar line right there, just show the space. So you've given that note the space it requires to show a longer beat there. So we have a two beat note plus one, two plus one is three. There we go, and so we should be right now for the last bar, Half plus half is one, half plus half is one, there's one, two, three, correct. And our final bar, we're adding two crotchet beats together, whatever adds up to two crotchet beats. So there's one, there's one, one plus one is two, there's the bar line. Half plus half is one, there's another one, that's two, just short bars, just two beats each. One plus half plus half, there's our one, two, and so our final beat, our final bar, sorry, I should say, should be two beats and that's correct. And so that's the end of that section really. We've just got a little bit of um, a review here and it's asking us how many new musical terms can you remember? Because really we've come across quite a lot of new, new words really, quite a lot of new uh, yeah, it's just getting into the lingo, really. So, I mean, how, there's a lot of words that you've come across. So just glance back over the, the previous pages and think about what you've been uh, learning of so far. Quite a lot of new vocab to uh, get used to. So we've got all of the note values for a start. So we've done semi-breathe. And we've done minim and crotchet with a T and quaver. So they are the note values that we've learned. We've also learned about the structure. We've learned about bars. We've learned about a bar. We've had bar lines. We've had double bar lines, haven't we? At the end of a section. Have a glance through and see if there's anything else you can think of. Do glance through and review what you've covered so far. We've also had time signatures, haven't we? And actually one thing that we've learned when we were looking at time signatures, we've also got the term common time now as well, haven't we? Which refers to four over four, so common time. 
Um, I think that's quite a lot of what we've covered so far. We've thought about pulse, how we count the pulse, like the clock ticking, beat one, two, one, two. We've learned about meter, how we measure things out. Uh, so, you know, uh, just glance back and you make your own little dictionary of terms there just to help to get to grips with all the things that we've discussed so far. And then here we can just in this last little box have a little review on all of the... Oh, the time values are there. They should be there, shouldn't they? Okay, so the time values perhaps belong in that box. And we've also done time signatures as well, haven't we? So your semi brief minim, crotchet and quave will perhaps be more appropriate in this section here. And then we've also uh, discussed the time signatures. So the time signatures we've covered so far are 2 over 4, 3 over 4 and 4 over 4. And that could also be referred to with that curly C for common time. So that's the end of the rhythm section, part one of Discovering Music Theory, grade one. I hope this is helpful to your studies. Please do like and subscribe to stay updated. If you'd like to support this channel, you can buy me a coffee and for advert free lessons, you can become a patron. Do visit my website where you'll find many resources available to help you. Visit SharonBill.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.